Uh, hey guys, my name is Naren and I welcome all the viewers once again in this video. And guys, in this video, I'm just. Hey guys, my name is Naren and I welcome all the viewers in this video and my YouTube channel as well. So, guys, as you can see uh, on the screen, I'm just continuing with the concept of uh, Compti and Plus certification. And in that, I'm today discussing about the seventh chapter, which is. Uh, TCP IP services. So, what are the TCP IP services? I will be talking about one by one in this video. If you found it is helpful, please don't forget to subscribe my channel. This is the URL of my channel, and you can find the same from my um, blog also. This is the path of my blog. So, same you will be getting from there. So, let me show you what I have uh, covered in this. So, my first topic will be IP address assignment method is and uh, the th uh, second one is topic b host name resolution third topic will be netwios uh, name resolution fourth uh, topic will be tcp ip utilities and the next topic will be tcp ip upper layer services and the last topic will be tcp ip interoperability services so we will understand all those things one by one so the objective of this lesson is very simple at the end you should be able to you know configure a computer to get IP address statically and dynamically identify uh, host name resolution method and net, net virus name resolution method uh, common TCP IP utilities and primary upper layer services of or on TCP IP network or TCP IP op, uh, interoperability uh, services so we will go through one by one throughout this video so the topic first is uh, or topic A like IP address assignment method is. So in this again we will understand uh, what are the method is available uh, for TCP IP or IP address assignment. Okay, so guys the first very first one is static and dynamic addressing. So we will understand what does it mean by static and dynamic addressing here. So the very first one is here like TCP IP address information can be assigned to a node on the network statically by manually entering the addressing information on each individual network node so the meaning is very simple it is done by the I'm talking about the uh, static so it is done by administrator they will have to assign the IP address system by system or node by node manually okay they need to go to attend particular that is specific system and assign the specific IP address that is known as static IP address okay or it can be provided dynamically so what does it mean by dynamically so dynamically means by assigning DHCP host configuration protocol which is also known as DHCP so we can assign uh, IP address manually as well as dynamically so for example I will show you this is my machine okay this is my system here if I need to assign IP address I will have to go to LAN card and if I go to property then I will have two options here what what are those two options so as you can see here obtain IP address automatically the first one which means I can configure host a DHCP server and I, if I select this it will take IP address from that server and this is manually I have given the IP address okay if I have 100 computer and I am going statically then I will have to assign 100 IP address manually to all the systems or all the nodes but in case of dynamic I just need to select this one and this, this server DHCP server will provide IP address to all the nodes on the network so this is what I'm talking here okay use the following IP address this is statically and obtain the IP address manually automatically that is known as DHCP so this is what I'm talking about DHCP server is here and I have two node on one node I assign manually and second node DHCP through DHCP or you can say if it is in uh, your network so that system will also take IP address from your DHCP server that is known as dynamic addressing next one is guy static IP address assignment so config uh, configuring TCP IP statically on the network requires an administrator to visit each node okay and enter manually that is what I just told you if the node moves to different subnet again administrator administrator need to manually ch make that change okay in larger network it is quite difficult so in that condition what we can do we can use uh, DHCP 
and uh, in larger network configuring TCP IP statically each node can be very time consuming and can be prone to error or disturb the communication so there can be little bit challenges in figure network if we use statical IP addressing so uses for static addresses so what are the uses so guys static addresses are typically only assigned to system with the dedicated functionality such as router interface network address printer or a server system that are that host network application so for certain number of or very uh, I mean very specific systems we can assign manual IP addresses like server routers or we have printer certain application uh, servers we have so that we need we do not need to change uh, those IP address uh, again and again in that condition we can go but we have multi multi nodes and uh, they want they need to get IP address but th we those system not required to change IP address very frequently so we can assign DHCP dynamically IP address for them so this is what I was talking about dynamic host con configuration protocol which is also known as DHCP so in this we will understand uh, entire DHCP process so guys DHCP is a network service that provides automatic assignment of IP addresses and other TCP IP configuration information on the network to nodes that are configured as DHCP clients so meaning is very simple here ok so this is what I am talking about this is the DHCP server ok and these are the DHCP clients so once it is configured there will be one uh, the scope contains the range of IP address so there, there is a our uh, scope in that we decide the, the range what are the range or uh, from which range the client will ad obtain the IP addresses ok so nothing much in this uh, if you want to know how to install and configuration in detail about DHCP server you can uh, subscribe my channel and I have uploaded couple of videos on DHCP entire DHCP configuration I have, up I have done and covered lots of things so just you can go through and search from there definitely you will get informative information so this is what I'm talking about the system has taken I decided one range like 192.168.100.151 uh, or you can say uh, the my network is 192.168.0.100.0 uh, that is the network and for up to 254 or 255 I gave range for that so it has taken 151 here 150 here and 152 so it is taking uh, IP address from that range next one is guys the DHCP lease process ok so what is lease here lease at a, is a time uh, particular time or a specific time for that time that system will be holding that IP address or using that IP address that is known as lease so what is the process so the process is very simple here uh, as you can see here the DHCP lease process ok how it is given to client so first of all what is happening here this is a DHCP server and this is a DHCP client so from here DHCP discover one broadcast will be generated from this client so it will dis it will discover is there any DHCP now this DHCP will tell yes I am the DHCP I am offering I am a DHCP so this again this will send one request you can give me one IP address and uh, this DHCP will send acknowledgement to this yes I can assign you then it will assign one IP address to this system along with that lease and couple of information that is the process of lease process so how it will happen node comes online ok once we select open IP address automatically that node is online that computer is online so what will happen here the, as I told you node configured as DHCP comes online and loads the simple version of TCP IP address DH DHCP discover the next step the node issues boot P bootstrap protocol broadcast called DHCP discover Th uh, that is 4 time 255 uh, to find any DHCP is online and as soon as DHCP listens that broadcast it says yes I am a DHCP and it will respond to that and offer yes I am DHCP like that now once again one request the node selects the first offer it receives and returns the request to lease the uh, address called a DHCP request so in that request it will say I mean that node will say yes you can assign me one IP address and assign the lease also so now DHCP will send one acknowledgement the request with the packet called DHCP acknowledgement and start the leasing 
yes i have given this ip address to you in you can ask for the, this much of time now what will happen unused offers expires okay when the unused offers are available all the servers return the ip address they offer to the available pool in their dhcp scopes so if they are offering 50 ip address and only 10 is useful so in that condition 40 will come back to dhcp scope now next thing next very important concept is apipa what is uh, that is also known as automatic private ip addressing okay so what does it mean so guys, this is also a very uh, you know interesting concept in this what happens uh, by name itself you should be able to understand if you have configured dhcp in your network and the dhcp is not working or it went uh, fail or it is down in that condition one ip is automatically assigned to all the systems that is that is a range which is like 169.254.46. That is the range of that IP address. So system will take one IP address automatically. That is uh, known as a PIPA. Okay. So automatic private IP assigning is a service that enables DHCP client computer to configure itself automatically with the IP address in the range of 192. Uh, sorry, 169.254.0.12. Uh, 169.254.255.254 if no DHCP server respond to the client request so this is what the concept of APIPA here and you can un understand here also uh, for example uh, this is also APIPA IP address this is also APIPA IP address and this is also APIPA IP address because my DHCP is not available it is down and APIPA addresses are not routable so computers with a PIPA address cannot communicate outside the local subnet. Now let's me move to the next one. Now I will talk about the ping utility. Okay, so what do you mean by ping here? So guys, you can use ping command to verify the network connectivity. Basically, we use for this purpose only. Ping checks the host name, IP address, and the remote system can be reached. So that is the main concept that is the main use of uh, ping to check the connectivity of two requests I mean two uh, remote computers and uh, ping uses ICMP eco request datagram to check the connection between host uh, by sending eco packet and listening uh, for reply packets so this is what I'm talking about here this is ping see for example I'm pinging dc dot classmate dot class so it will give you like uh, yes it is it is available it is replying from and this is the IP, IP address and this is a network static here like uh, uh, received how many packet how many packet lost uh, or uh, approximately trip time and all so lots of thing will come here this is average speed or this is maximum we can find through that ping okay this is what the result of this ping now ping option so you can ping uh, by computer I mean uh, computer name or ping by IP address you can also ping the loopback address loopback address is 127.0.01 to test whether TCP IP has initiated on all the individual systems so this 127.0.1 IP address is also known as loopback IP address so it checks the functionality of IP I mean TCP IP whether it is working or not on local or individual system next one is guys IP configuration utilities okay so we talk about different different utilities here for example if we talk about bin IP CFG so it was supported in earlier on operating system like Windows 98 or Windows 95 when it came and if we talk about the next utility which is IP config so IP config supported in Windows Server 2003 XP 2000 servers okay and uh, still it is going on and IP or if config this is not IP config this one is if config so if config supported in Linux and Unix operating systems for the connectivity check now so topic one is over now we'll talk about topic B which is host name resolution so what is this uh, host name resolution we will understand in this step by step so host name is what so host name is the unique name given to a network node on TCP IP network so it is the name of a particular device or host on the network okay the most uh, name combined with the host name domain name 
forms a fully qualified domain name so it will be a combination of your domain name as well as host name that is known as a fully qualified domain name the fully qualified domain name is mapped to the network uh, nodes IP address by name resolution service so the user can use the name instead of IP address to communicate with other network nodes on the internet so let me show you what does it mean for example this portion is a host name this is my server name and this is my domain name so it is a combination this is a fully qualified domain name okay if I need to talk to uh, internet or if, if I'm going to internet from my system that this name will go to that internet now domain naming system DNS what is this so the domain name system is a TCP IP name resolution service that translates uh, fully qualified domain name into IP address the main concept of DNS is to just uh, resolution of IP address to name and name to IP address because for human it is very easy to remember the name like Google Facebook Yahoo and all but if you talk about remembering the IP addresses of the Google Facebook and all it will be a very difficult so that uh, but it is easy for the machines to remember both I, I mean name as well as IP addresses so this is what done by uh, system or this DNS service provide the name resolution for example if I uh, put google.com then it will go to uh, that Google server but it will be going through IP addresses and all so it ha it is a very huge concept okay for example uh, all the servers work together to resolve the fully qualified uh, domain name so there will be lots of services uh, kept uh, to resolve this query or answer the query internally or externally to make that proper communication or uh, that uh, what uh, we are trying to access okay on internal network local DNS service can resolve the host name without using the external DNS so if you are talking about inside your domain then there will be one DNS server to resolve a domain name for your client computers or the nodes but if you are going to uh, outside or external network then there are certain external DNS services also kept to resolve the names common DNS records so guys there are multiple records but we talk about the common so first one is a record which is the most uh, which is a whole which is the host record and maps the host name to its IP address okay for example if I tell you this server 003 is the server name and IP address 11 uh, 192.168.0.1 so that will map that IP address to that host name particularly and PTR record so guys uh, PTR pointer record is also known as so which maps the IP address to host name for reverse lookup functionality and CNAME record which maps multiple uh, canonical names which is also known as alias to a record so the DNS hierarchy okay so it is a very big hierarchy DNS because only there is no one server there are lots of services uh, we have for this uh, name resolution so DNS names are built in a hierarchical structure the top of the structure contains the root name which is represented by uh, a period I will show you what does it mean let me move to that only so this is what I'm talking here this one is your root domain name okay or root server it is represented by dot and apart from that you can use dot com edu or org government something like that so if you talk about this hierarchy how it is started so this one is your fully qualified domain name and this training training for example your system name or something like that host name so it is starting from here or you have given any any uh, certain name like this so training dot uh, or uh, global company dot com so it is moving like this this dot com like that so I will tell a little bit more in this uh, about this hierarchy in coming slides so the DNS name resolution process how it happens for example this is a DNS client okay so uh, again the name is like uh, training or something like that so it is initiating initiating from here so what will happen first of all and this is fully qualified domain name tra training dot or global company dot com so it is initiating from here and uh, this is my uh, you can say global company domain and it is moving to dot com once again and this is root server so what will happen I will tell you in next slide so client request okay so when a client needs to resolve DNS name it sends uh, a name resolution request to IP address 
of its preferred DNS server. Preferred DNS server, if the preferred DNS server has the request name in its DNS cache query or its local uh, database, it returns the IP address to the client root server on the top and there are top level domain also top level domain server also other domain host name resolution host address so guys you can just go through this much information here and you can uh, read little bit and just I'm uh, moving to the next one so I just told you how it happens and guys there are two types of queries one is recursive query and second one is iterative name queries so these are used to resolve the request okay so a recursive query is when the client requests that is preferred DNS server find data on other server so this query will give you or will try to give you proper reply the meaning is very simple here I'm not going in very deep and recursive requests start with the client requesting name to resolve to an IP address uh, to its preferred DNS okay this is what so meaning is very uh, uh, simple in this guys uh, recursive query always try to give answer to your client okay it will not send that request to another server but if we talk about the iterative queries if it is not able to resolve the name to your query it will resend that query to another server that is the difference between recursive and iterative name queries next one is uh, an iterative queries occurs when the client requests only the information a server already has it's in, in in its catch for the particular domain name so you should not worry about this much information the information is very simple recursive will try to give you the part I mean proper response but in term of iterative, iterative it will resend that query to another server so guys similarly we have one more concept here which is primary and secondary DNS server so what is that so in simple if I tell you uh, primary, primary server will contain the uh, read only or read write uh, writes or data uh, of your DNS servers uh, primary will have read only so let me uh, go through this little bit here when configuring client DNS settings it is common to specify both primary and secondary address of DNS server to provide more rel uh, reliable name resolution so the meaning is very simple when we configure uh, DNS for any client we provide two IP uh, two DNS one is primary and se uh, second one is secondary so as you can see here because if my primary is down we, uh, the secondary should or alternate DNS should work and my system should not be uh, I mean should be able to communicate so this is what we assign to IP address and now when two DNS server are listed the client query queries the primary server first so that request will go to the primary first if the primary server doesn't answer the client query goes to secondary server if the primary server returns the name not found message the query is over the client doesn't query the secondary server this is because the both server uh, can do recursive and iterative queries and both the primary and secondary server should be able to contact the same resource if one can't find it the other will not be able to either so that host should be uh, properly connected or should be able to communicate with both the server or both the server should also be able to communicate or uh, available with that I mean available on the network now guys next one is host files so what do we mean by host files so the meaning is very simple I'm not going through this much host file is also a mechanism or service just like DNS to resolve the name of uh, you can say the domain name or host name or any something like that so host file is a plain text file configured as a client machine containing a list of IP addresses that their associate host name and separated by at least one space okay and the concept is also once again like uh, resol resolution so this is a host file you can find in your uh, if you go to drivers and this location etc and here we have host so this is the host file and here we can put uh, lots of IP addresses so it is assigned to resolve the name also or you can block lots of things from there also so this will uh, this will be your IP address and this will be your host name okay at least one space in between both them now topic C net BIOS name resolution so guys what is this what do we mean by uh, 
net bios name resolution so host name resolves host name resolution is a, is one type of name resolution service okay net bios name resolution is a, another this is also a similar kind of uh, service name resolution net bios name resolution in this topic we will understand this so let me talk about net bios first of all what is net bios so net bios name net bios names are a 60 uh, 16 byte common name format developed by IBM and Microsoft to identify network devices so it was developed earlier you can say okay and developed by IBM and Microsoft to identify network devices 15 bytes represents character in the name the hidden 16 byte is the code of uh, code to do uh, donate the type of device uh, the type of service provided by the device so let me show you this so it will be very easy to understand so this is the net bios uh, uh, simple example here so this is department file okay Th these 15 bytes are showing you uh, this first one common name format and next one is a 16 bytes what i told you here 16 byte this one common name format and what about the 15 bytes here Fifteen bytes represents a character in the name. Okay, so this will be your name, and the next sixteen will be uh, hidden. Sixteen byte is 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 a code to uh, donate the type of service provided by the device. Type of services provided by the device. So twenty twenty. What kind of service it is? I will tell you. So Net BIOS broadcast name resolution. So how it resolves? for data delivery net bios name must be resolved to mac address okay so for example uh, let me uh, tell you a little bit more thing here the original net bios name resolution method was to broadcast a name and wait for response from the device with the name okay so in this the broadcasting is basically uh, used uh, or was used so in that when mac address was uh, broadcasted and the device Uh, to which it was uh, belonging that has to respond yes it is mine then what will happen the the, ma uh, the resolved mac address is then cached on the local machine for later use as network grows the amount of traffic generated by net wires broadcast can slow down the network so broadcasting uh, is always you know uh, reason for your uh, high traffic or it generates high traffic so to avoid that later on this dns and all came in this the same scenario how it happens like it will be a broadcasting of mac address and that mac address containing uh, system will respond to that request and it will be used for later on now windows internet naming service which is also known as bins okay so guys bins means what windows internet name service is microsoft net bios name server which was developed to reduce the number of net bios name resolution broadcast it 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 came to reduce that broadcasting of or uh, that broadcast traffic the bin server uses name resolution table to map net bios names to protocol address okay so what does it mean here so this is what the concept of is for example we have three nodes here and this is my bin server so it will can it will generate or it will maintain one uh Table like bin uh, client one, and this is the IP address, and this is, is for second, this is for third one. So this is the concept of net bios. Oh, you can say the bins. Okay, bin server. How does it work? Next one is the bins name registration process. How this registration process will happen? So when the bins client is start up, it contain it it contacts the uh, bin server to register its name for a fixed least period. So as soon as the system will start, it has to register. Uh, with the uh, bin server for that it keeps the name until it shut down so for that time being until or uh, till the time it is using uh, that uh, service from bin so that ip address if another client start up and attempt to register with the same name what will happen here registration we are talking about for example this is one pc it got registered okay now by mistake uh, i made one more pc here and it is also trying to Uh, register but the name name is very similar what will happen in that case what will happen uh, 
the first computer lease is still valid the second computer name registered failed so this will be failed it will not get that lease now guys we have one more thing here lm host file so lm you can say an lm host files is a text file once again contains net bios names to ip address mappings each on separate lines so again it is the kind of uh, host file itself so in that we will have a record of all the ip addresses and net bios name and uh, comments uh, Treated by uh, the symbol or the space between the sections everywhere we will have here separate I mean little bit of space okay so once again if we read about the IP addresses listed first then space then uh, associate by net virus name comment and do not have been server if you do not have been server the LM host file is manually alter uh, alternatively to broadcast based name resolution now guys once again here the net virus name resolution process so when Vince clients needs an address uh, for name it first check its net virus cache to see if the uh, it has already any IP address if not then it only it will send that request to uh, Vince uh, server if the Vince server has an entry it returns if it doesn't it respond negatively okay then the Vince client broadcasts for the name if it doesn't receive a response to its broadcast it checks for the entry in the LM host files this is the process what I was talking about resolving a NetBIOS name first step NetBIOS cache it will check in its cache memory it will send to DNS server and it will broadcast once again and if it is if it doesn't uh, you know if it doesn't uh, it respond negatively and uh, if it doesn't receive a response to its broadcast it will check this lm host files now what about the non wins clients here for example we have windows windows okay but we have certain linux or uh, other operating system also so Vince also support adding non-Windows enabled clients names such as Linux and uh, Linux servers through manual entries. For that, we can create manual entries. Uh, a static database entry is added to the bin server, enabling Vince client to resolve the known names of non-Windows or non-Windows client that cannot register automatically with bin server. So here, this is a bin server, and I have Vince clients, and I have one bin unix server here non bins client so in that condition manually we can statically uh, put the information of this now wins proxy agent so what is this a wins proxy agent enables non wins client to use wins for names resolution okay the proxy agent com uh, captures the client net virus broadcast request for name resolution and forward it to bin server so this is a scenario for example i have one wins proxy agent installed on this computer and this is my uh, wins because the proxy agent inter inter intercepts uh, broadcast and here non wins client one and this is bin server and here one switch you can say so what is this process the wins server now it, it generated one request and the win it sent to that wins server wins server respond to the proxy agent and proxy agent sends the response to the client wins proxy agents have to be on the same subnet as non wins client okay so now it will send that request to i mean that respond to non wins client they must be configured with the ip address of the same win server so that they can send unicast name requests across router to the server so this could be a router or a switch next one is guys next topic topic t tcp ip utilities so in this we will see uh, what are the utilities t tcp ip utilities we have we have available so the trace art the first utility it is used to determine the route data takes to get to a destination particular destination and the icmp protocol sends out time exceeding message to reach to, e to each router to trace the route each time a packet is sent the ttl value is reduced before the packet is forwarded this allows ttl to count how many hops it is to the destination 
so the meaning is very simple here guys if you put trace art and put anything like uh, any any website what you want to trace so it will give you this much information okay this is your total number of hopes to remote host 1 to 20 like that and this is your ms okay this is response time to each router and this is the information uh, about the routes you are going through or networks you are crossing that is the uh, result of trace art utility now troubleshooting with trace art how we can use this trace art to troubleshoot so using the trace art command as a troubleshooting tool you can use uh, you can see how far packets are getting and uh, how long each router took to respond to the ICMP packet and one more thing here a long response time indicate a routing problem at the point in the route so network firewall it is a very important here if you have network firewall and you have blocked or you have not allowed ping or trace in your firewall so that in that condition your uh, trace will not give you any response okay and it will give you destination unreachable uh, message because you are not able to reach to your host or your destination and that firewall is playing role in between as a wall so next utility is net stat utility so guys the net stat utility shows the status of each active network connections okay each active network connections net stat will display statistics uh, statistics for udp as well as utp including protocol local address foreign address and tcp connection state so th these many uh, information will be uh, you know provided uh, by the net stat or you can say net stat utility because udp is a connection less protocol no connection information will be shown for udp broadcast let me show you so this is what i have here for example you are running this command net stat minus a let me see what i'm getting here okay this is my command prompt here we will put this command n e t s t a t and hyphen minus a so it, it, it is providing all the information of uh, i mean this available uh, connection available connection basically and this is showing protocol local address and this is foreign address state okay listening listening and this is providing state uh, socket state of the connection now let me put this utility also trace art i will show you here trace art like uh, we put here trace art i'm putting google.com oh, i think i missed something spelling mistake so we need to put oh, 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 oh. here i need to put e enter so it is giving me entire path and uh, like uh, what are the networks I'm crossing, what are the routers I'm cro crossing and how soon I'm reaching to next destination. It is completed within 8, eight tries. It did 8 tries. Okay. So let me move to the next one. Next utility. Next utility is guys net stat options. So we have certain options as I told you minus A or this hyphen A hyphen E. It will give you Ethernet statistics, all connections and listening ports. Uh, hyphen and address and port number and o will give you uh, the process id associated with each connections and uh, you can read yes uh, certain things like minus i mean hyphen r routing table uh, hyphen r static group by protocol like ip ip version 4 icmp port and all so you can try by running one by one next one is guys nb stat now nbt stat basically nbt stat utility so how it is useful so nbt stat or uh, is a windows utility that is used to view and manage net bios over tcp ip net v net vt uh, static status information so let me show you what does it mean basically 
and uh, will uh, I will show you first. Let me complete this. It can display NetBIOS name table for both local computer and remote computer, and also the NetBIOS name catch with NAT. Oh, with you can say NBT stat. You can rephrase the NetBIOS name catch as well as the names registered with the Win server. So this is what I'm talking about here. Let me put the command. What we get here? So we don't have any NetBIOS server. Okay, a Win server here. But still, we we can try N V T S T A T hyphen C. I'm putting. So what will come here? So it is providing certain information like uh, this is providing IP address first of all. The NetBIOS remote catch name table. This is a table name. This is the name of uh, like uh, uh, one system is available and type unique IP address fifty eight and This is swing second. I mean this live. Okay, so same thing is here. You can see this will provide you the name. Again, this unique and IP address and uh, this live timing time remaining until catch entry is uh, purged or IP address associated with the NetBIOS name. Sixteenth bit service code and NetBIOS name name type can either be unique or group. Okay. So this is why we can. Uh, this is how we can use NVT stat utility. And there are certain options like hyphen A once again, capital A, C, and display the NetBIOS name, catch local computer. Once again, you can read this here. So let me move to the next one. And the next one is NS lookup utility. So NS lookup utility is used to test the and troubleshoot the domain name servers. Okay, NS lookup has two modes: interactive mode. enable you to uh, query name server for information about host and domain name or to print it a list of host and the domains and the second one is non interactive so uh, nodes prints only the name and request detail for the host or domain so let me show you what does it mean once again here entering uh, iterative mode okay so ns lookup i'm putting for example so it will provide this much information only Like default server, this is the server name and uh, this uh, address, and address by default DNS server, and this is query result for www. If we put www something like that, so we will try both here. Let me put here NS lookup. Okay, so I got this IP address. This is my uh, you can say the DNS. Okay, I'm getting. And default unknown server, and if we put here something like uh, again, I'm putting. So I need to come out. NS look up and Google dot com. I'm giving okay, and hitting enter. So it will give you a couple of information, other information. So it, So it is provided like uh, it it didn't reach that, and uh, DNS request timeout, DNS request timeout, and known timeout. And if I put, now we will put www. Okay, so ns look up www dot google dot com. So what it shows now. So again, it uh, took my local uh, DNS what I have given to the system, and it is not reaching to that one. So this is how NS lookup utility helps to identify the server name and all. Okay, and uh, if I put, I think that my my machine is not on domain, so it will not provide much information. It will give this this that IP address only what I have shown you just now. Now let me move to the NS lookup support. So guys, it provides support to Unix also on all Windows system expect uh, except for 90s and Windows Me. And there is a uh, utility, dig utility, that is uh, like domain information grouper, is a ut Unix utility used to gather the information of DNS servers. So here in Unix, NS lookup is like dig. now one more uh, utility is guys arp arp stands for address resolution okay protocol so 
the ARP command supports the ARP service of TCP IP protocol suits. It enables an administrator to view the ARP cache and add or delete cache entries. So basically guys the use of ARP utility is to just translate MAC address to IP address. If I don't know the IP address of the system I can find it with this okay. So this is the main concept of uh, ERP or IP2 address I think IP2 IP2 MAC okay IP2 MAC ARP and RARP is MAC to IP address so this is the main function of for example if we go to uh, this system once again and ARP minus A let me hit this so it is not providing me any information but it, it provides this kind of information like uh, ERP cache because I don't have any cache that is why it is not giving my system ok so here IP address will come and this is physical address of that system and this right dynamically or statically we have assigned the uh, IP address to that so let me move to the next one next one is guys next topic is topic E TCP IP upper layer services so uh, TCP protocol TCP IP protocol suits also include service that work at upper layer of the protocol stack in this topic we will see that only so here first one is file transfer protocol so the file FTP also known as so the file transfer protocol enables the transfer of files between a user's workstation and a remote host okay for example I have one computer here and one computer here so by this FTP I can transfer files from one place to another place over uh, inside your network as well as outside your network with FTP user can access the directory structure uh, on a remote host change the directory search the name files and all download files upload files this is the basic concept of this one and FTP commands must be entered in lowercase okay there are both DOS and UNIX commands available and if you want to access then you should have username and password of that uh, FTP so this is what I'm talking about this is your FTP and by using FTP utility we can access that resource from the server if any, any, any resource is kept on the server next one is guys TFTP and SFTP so uh, the full form of uh, TFTP is tribal file transfer protocol is a simple version of FTP that uses UDP okay so it is a type of uh, you can say the same FTP but it, it uses UDP instead of TCP and if we talk about SFTP so simple file transfer protocol was another earlier unsecured file transfer protocol that has since been declared obsolete so guys this one is more secure as compared to, compared to STP okay FTP SFTP is more secure and if we talk about little bit here internet browsers and FTP so the most internet browser can support FTP in a GUI mode for example if you want to access any uh, FTP if you have let me show you here I think I, I should have okay let me go to desktop I have couple of uh, blah. this is if, if, if I go to these are uh, not working ok so guys you can simply access those things uh, if you have username and password and IP, IP address you just need to uh, either you can go to this and put FTP and uh, you will have to assign IP address and all so let me move to the next one and it is supported very easily there is no and in nowadays there are lots of uh, tools like uh, bin scp or, or filezilla and all you can use to connect to your ftp server and download or upload the resources next utilities guys uh, telnet so what is telnet so telnet is a terminal emulation protocol that enables a user 
at one side to simulate a session with remote host so taking a remote of uh, any device on the network or remote device is a is a you can say with the help of this telnet you can take remote for example you have one telnet uh, uh, daemon daemon here and if you want to access this from here either it could be router firewall or your system itself so you can use this uh, and take the remote of that one so you need to use command like telnet and ip address username and password and telnet should be enabled on both the devices both sides so if we talk about the telnet default so port is 23 however you can specify different port if the host to which you are connecting is configured to use different ports and 25 lines in the buffer but it can configure up to 399 lines 